Hello, my name's Gail Leatherby and my presentation's called Hair Today. Hair Today, hopefully not gone tomorrow. Crowning glory, luscious locks, Rapunzel's saviour, Samson's downfall. To cut, colour, curl and comb, to braid, cream or shave. For fashion or political statement, much, much more than a bunch of keratin. And what of my own thatch, trestles, locks, barnet fair, blonde to brown to various, now a natural grey, silver, or my auntie's the one with the white hair, a seven-year-old friend said recently, introducing me to some of her schoolgirl chums. Always thick, like your dad, said my mum. No fear of thinning here, the hairdressers agreed. All good until a couple of summers ago, when first I noticed hairs on my hands, when I so much as touched my previously fulsome head full, as I say, hopefully not gone tomorrow. I worry it's a reaction to medication or some bodily changes as yet undiagnosed, but a trip to the doctor in late 2019 and a hormone test shows nothing amiss. Have you been stressed about anything lately? The GP asks. Where to start? The state of it all. Climate change, Brexit, money for wars but no pay rise for the NHS, living in a beautiful sea-surrounded county which is yet the first or second poorest in the country, depending on which report one reads, not to mention Northern Europe, the bunch of horrors that are the, I refuse to say our, UK government, the struggle for something better whilst observing and personally experiencing attacks on the left, as a related aside, I've become somewhat attracted and addicted to Twitter in recent years. And although I've networked, made friends with and been supported by many like-minded others, I've attracted a fair number of online insults too. Some of you know this if you've listened to my musings previously. But before I go on, and just to say, I can categorically state that Jeremy Corbyn did not make my hair fall out. But as he's been blamed and doorstepped for almost everything else, why not for my own current personal follicle distress? Whatever the reason or reasons, it seems hair loss is a likely part of my life story from now on. There are weeks when it doesn't seem so bad. And then I notice the precious grey, silver, white strands on my t-shirt or cushion and off, literally, it comes again. My photos chart my relationship with hair, along with my relationships with loved ones, past and present. There's the school photo taken the day after I took the scissors to my fringe. There's the pile of hair in the sink a month or so into the first COVID-19 lockdown, when I could stand the struggle no longer. My first wedding perm, my blonde baby locks, the various lengths, short and cut into the neck, long and flowing, ponytails and more. The tidy, the windswept and all in between. Then of course there are the hair raising experiences not captured or at least not evident in a photograph. The two, three times when working as a nursery nurse that I caught nits along with the other nursery inhabitants. The reason for the first significant haircut, my plait sticky from falling in the school custard yet again, my tears at the brushing out of tangles after a wash and dry. That bob saved my mum hours. My dad wasn't pleased. He got over it. And it grew again. The political horrors I mentioned just now, that literally do make me want to tear my hair out, although I'm much gentler towards it, much more respectful of it than I once was. It's nearly 18 months since my last trip to Cutting Edge. I cut my mum's hair once, and on her next trip to the salon, the woman holding the scissors this time asked somewhat reproachfully, Who cut your hair last? My daughter said, Mum. Your daughter's not a hairdresser, is she? was the reply. I used to cut my late husband John's strawberry blonde once of vibrant ginger hair too. But I used a hair razor to achieve his preferred number four. He did his beard himself. And it's fair to say that the tool took the strain and not much skill was required. Still, since that first lockdown home cut, I've managed alone well enough. I know I'm not a professional, 
but it'll do. It's okay. Isn't it? Well, isn't it? Like many women, and men I guess, I have mixed feelings about sitting in the hairdresser's chair, the pain in the neck whilst leaning back to have your hair washed and all the curlers or foils pulled out, the sitting for hours and hours whilst it's permed, highlighted, tall head collared, cut, dried. I've been through the whole caboodle, the froofing, as a friend recently described it. And yet, the pleasure from the pressure of the head massage, delivered by trained, powerful fingers. Bliss. And then there's the talk. I know some don't like the chatter, but mostly I have done, especially when I've got to know my stylist beyond the perfunctory. I remember real care and kindness following the deaths of John and my mum, and whispered shared confidences about paying conditions, in addition to the essential, when next are you going on holiday? What are you doing for Christmas? discussions. All memories now. There are other hair memories too. Who'd have thought, well not me until now, that I could, that I would, chart my autobiography in this way. One precious recollection as I near the end of my hair story to date. The time I was out with my mum, when whilst waiting for a bus together, I sit on a shop step and she leans down to stroke my head, my hair. We were always physically affectionate, my Dorothy and I. Remind me to tell you of the time she was washing my back in the bath, and then, before I stopped her with a laugh, she began to wash my face too. I was 51 at the time. Back to our bus stop exchange, more than 20 years earlier. Mum stroking my head, my hair. I'm tired, and under her soft touch I could doze off, even though the step is cold and hard. That is until she stops short and with some shock in her voice exclaims, Goodness, you're going grey. I must be old. Well, if it keeps on falling out, I'll go for a number two and learn to live with it. I told the GP that day I went to the surgery and not the salon to discuss my hair. Part resignation, part bravado. Two years on and my head's still covered, although it's not just because of my slightly tender left ear that I appreciate my woolly hat from early autumn through late spring. Who knows where I'll be, what I'll have left, in five, ten years' time. Here today, hopefully not gone tomorrow.